and viability. Two things, readiness, viability. You know, the fish might be ready in coat, but how viable are the eggs? If the eggs are not viable, there will be no hatching. This is what I normally do. When I get a female that I want to use, I press gently, I use a spoon, I collect like four or five eggs, I put in the spoon, I put water, I wait for like about three or four minutes. By the time you wait, if you bring close to a light sauce, you should be able to see the nucleus of that egg. If you cannot see the nucleus, that egg is not viable. Don't waste your time. But if you can see the nucleus, because then everything starts from the nucleus, that is, the, that is life that we have. So once you can see the nucleus, please, you know that that egg is viable. Now, by the time you inject, for people of us that have actually, people amongst us that have actually done breeding before, by the time you inject and you wait for the normal 10, 11, 12 hours, if you do the same thing, you press, the, you press and you take the eggs, if you put also in water, you should notice that the eggs will have moved from the middle to the side. That egg is getting ready to accept the egg also from the male. I'm saying some things we don't normally see. There are some things we know. I'm just emphasizing on some things because I can see some, some of us, you know, shaking our heads. I'm going to spend some time here a little, two, three minutes. When Mr. Tiamiu comes on board, he's going to tell us some things, you know, also along some of these lines. Successful breeding, sustainable breeding starts from how we do it. Taking records, weighing. You can see me weighing that fish there. And what I just try to do is to get the weight. And you know that, you see, for some of our women that have actually conceived, that have been pregnant before, and you go to the hospital for antenatal. When you get to the doctor, the doctor will say, Madam, we want to take your weight. Right? You go on top of the scale. What is the doctor trying to do? The doctor wants to have an idea of the weight of the baby inside. And at a particular time, you see, the doctor will tell you that, Madam, softly, you're getting too much about an apple, might have to reduce. Or else the baby will not come out. That's true. So once you have an idea of the weight of the fish, you have an idea of the weight of the eggs. From the experiences and experiments that we have carried out, I noticed that some farmers have said that 8% of the weight of the female is the weight of the eggs. Some, some have said that it's 12%. I have done it before and I realized 10% was the average. So we are going to use 10%. For today's calculation now if you have a fish you see now this is done to have an idea of the weight of the egg inside the fish like i just explained now from my experience i can guess evidently 10 percent now if you have a fish that is 1.5 please follow me carefully if you have a fish that is 1.5 kg this is 1500 grams right i'm going to ask questions so please follow me calculation mathematics is life so please follow me. Once you get it right, you will have no, you'll have, you'll have any, no, no reason to have any, to make any errors. Now, if you want to use three females. Now, somebody took me up yesterday and he said that you cannot actually say that a good bullstock should be 1.5. For this, for the sake of this period, please let's just say the female is 1.5. Are we good to go? So 1.5. I want to use three females. One, 1.5 times three. What is that, please? Thank you very much. Now, if I convert this 4.5 to grams, is it going to? Oh, thank you. God bless you. Now, three females, have you? Three females. Now, from what I just said now, 10% should give us an idea of the weight of the head. Now, 10% of this. 10% is equal to? Thank you. That means the weight of that egg, of the, of, the, of the egg that I want to use is 450 grams. That is what you should get. Now, you normally do this to calculate. Some farmers don't do this because they keep on assuming. In fish farming, don't assume. And the reason for this is somebody might call you that, you know, we are in, we are, we are in worry here in Port Harcourt. We need so, so, so quantity of fingerlings, so, so quantity of juveniles. So before you do the breeding, you, are, you need to calculate. Don't use more brood stock than necessary. And don't use lesser. Because if you use lesser, you might run into problem. That means you'll have to do the process again. And you know these things are actually based on time. You can see me running because I know I'm already short of time. So please follow me. Now, we want to know the number of eggs. 
I have done it before. I, I was able to get, I separated just one gram of egg. One gram, I weighed it out. One gram, I used a digital scale. Digital sensitive. A friend of mine brought it from the UK. And I said, I'm actually going to get a lot of these things. And I actually study fisheries in the university. So there are quite a number of these things that, of course, our lecturers will tell us. Now, when you're alone, you want to know if what Oga said is true. So I did it. I hope I'm not too fast. I should continue. Thank you. Now, I separated one gram of egg. I counted it. And I got 700 fishes. Some people have said that, you know, in some books, said it is 600. Some said 500. The one I counted, I got 700. So let us use 700. So in these 450 grams of eggs, we want to know the total number of eggs. What do we do? We multiply. So that will be 450 multiplied by 700. Please, let us use our calculator. Bring out your phones, M multiply. Let us see. What do we have? Sorry? 300 and... 350 or 15? Thank you, ma'am. 315,000. This is eggs. Abby? Good. By the time you now do this calculation, you need to put some things at the back of your mind. We do the normal breeding. A lot of our breeders, I'm emphasizing this and that for this time, we are talking about sustainable aquaculture in Nigeria. If you don't understand these basics, if this is all that you learn here today, Please, when you get home, just drink five alive and eat original labor. Sleep for some time. When you wake up, you'll be good. See, 315,000. You have an incubator. You want to spread. There are some assumptions based on knowledge. I have experienced 85% hatching before. Some have experienced more. It depends on the viability of the eggs and how good your management is and the kind of hash meat that you have. Let's just say you will get 50% arching. Abby, what is 50% of this number? What is it? 157. 157. 500. Please, let's go to the back. I hope you can see this from the back. Are we falling from the back? Thank you. 157,500. This is 50%. 50% hatching. So that means you are going to have 50% eggs that hatched and you got this number. Now, before I go on, I am not just making up these figures. This is something that has been practiced by farmers in different locations. And I interviewed them and I put you know, their results with what I have, you know, experienced also. So it is not just putting figures together. You know, now, 50% of that is 157,500. Now, you see, there's a particular stage we call the yolk stage. Immediately, the eggs hatch. They consume their yolks for the first three days. That's why we keep on saying in Ali Aqua, once your eggs hatch, don't feed. Wait for until after three days. In fact, I say that depending on the temperature, feed by the beginning, by the, by the fourth morning, so that the, 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 the fry will have completely consumed the yolk. God is wonderful. So the food that the fish, that the fry will eat for the first three days, God already gave. Just like God gave the food that the baby will eat, and God puts on the mama. No, be so. Good. So this is 157,500. Now, after the first three days, and you want to start feeding, Already, Mr. Dada talked about the Hali Aqua, you know, fry starter. You know, there's Hali Aqua 0 to 1. It's a dry feed, and it is fantastic. You know, crude protein, fiber content, muscle content, everything. Perfect. Perfect. In fact, you know, from research, it, it, it is evidently clear that the food the baby needs inside the mother, in that breast milk, contains practically everything. And that is exactly what I would like in the early aqua, you know, food. That feed to be also. Contains practically everything. The only problem is a lot of our farmers, we feed a little more than necessary. And I will get there. So let us assume, because you see, animals will die. There's nothing you can do about that. 
let us assume you have 10 percent 10 percent deducted from this because you see from the third day to the in from, from that third day you know all the way to the seventh day some farmers do explain some mortalities as a farmer there's nothing you can do about that god will always be god the one that is remaining just continue managing it and you give god the glory not so 10 percent deducted from this what do we have No, 10%. If you deduct 10%, 141,750. Please, I hope we are following. You know, because you see, if, if, if 10% dies from this, you know, due to natural mortality, you know, once you deduct it, you get this. Right? You get this. Now, two weeks later, because you see, you are trying to get to fingerling stage. And a good fingerling, according to what we have always said, should not be less than one gram. I don't know the standard here, but I'm telling you the normal standard. One gram, good fingerling, one gram, right? So that, this is for the first week. First week. Now, for by, by the two weeks later, which is third week, at the end of the third week, this is two weeks later. Let us assume another 10% goes away. Let's calculate it. Deduct another 10% from this number. 127. 127. 575. This is what you will get by the third week. By this time, they should be on highly high pass 0.2. And you see, Dr. Robert will actually tell us that the feed we use should overlap. A lot of our farmers we want to start with 0.1. We use 0 0.1 for 10 days. Then we start with 0 0.2. No, don't do that. If you are going to use 0 0.1 for 10 days, 7, 10 days, by the time you get to the eighth day, overlap it with 0 0.2. You still use 0 0.1, but overlap it. You can now make it 70, 30. 0.2, 30%, 0.1, 70%. Right? Day 9, you reduce it a little, 60, 40. Right? Day 10, 50-50, right? Day 11, then you can stop with 0 0.1. Once there is that overlap, it is always better. The reason for that is, like we say where I come from, man, past man, even twins born on the same day, you suddenly notice that some people are just bigger. That is the way God made them. Some fry will go bigger than others. And that is why that, you see, by the time you understand these basic things, you should be able to understand when to do grading, when to do something, when to remove your shooters and to do it in, you know, other things. Now, another two weeks later, getting to the fifth week, I'm not even saying the fourth week now, the fifth week, another 10% from this, what do we get? 114818. On the average, I have seen a farmer that used equivalent weight of eggs, not from 1.5 kg, average weight of fish, equivalent to weight of eggs, which is 450 grams of eggs, and he got 120,000. 120,000. Repeatedly. Repeatedly. Sustainable aquaculture, you should be able to get this. If you don't get this, please change some things you are doing. You can go back. If I need to repeat some things from this, please, just signify or repeat. You should be able to get that. 450 grams of eggs. If you are not getting close to 120,000 fingerlings, getting close to one gram, please, you might need to change some of your practices. Now we need to run. You see, farmers have also asked, where do I inject? How do I inject? What do I inject with? What should the process and procedures be? I want to submit to us today, inject at, you know, at the dorsal part, above the lateral line, not the belly part. There have been some pe people that, you know, want to submit that, inject at the belly, you know, that belly region. No, please don't do that. Because you can mistakenly puncture internal organs. And when you do that, you know, fishes might not be able to talk, but it is not good. And at the same time, Please never inject, that is the lateral line. Don't inject on the lateral line. The lateral line is full of nerve endings. It's like trying to put a syringe 
inside your lives. It's not good. So let it be at the dorsal. And now, some farmers will ask, should it be towards the head or towards the tail? I say towards the tail. Because as a beginner breeder, you will be doing most of these things by yourself. If you have somebody that will help pull the fish, then it really doesn't matter towards anywhere. You can inject towards the head. But if you are the one doing it by yourself, you know you will have to cover the head of the fish. If you have not done it before, attempt it again. Please, it's important. It is very, very easy to do. And you see, I, 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 I said something about the the other side. There's a particular thing we call the baby syringe. For our mothers here that have, you know, um, people in the, in, in, in the medical field, they should know what I'm talking about. If you don't know what you want to, want to get to the pharmaceutical place, just ask them for the baby, baby syringe. That one will not give any scarring. It will not injure the tissues of the fish. Now, those are the headaches. The headaches. When you are doing your stripping, immediately blood starts coming out. Stop. Some farmers have said repeatedly, I will make sure I bring out, I strip all the eggs and blood starts coming out. Please let us stop doing that. At the onset of blood, stop. Now for the male, you have to bring out, you have to kill the male, you call the male open and you bring out the sperm. It is unfortunate, but that's the way it is. So you bring out the male, you cut the male like that, that is the cement sack. We call it the sperm sack, that is it. If it is a goat, anything, and just like us also. And that's exactly the concentration of salt inside the fish. So once you put the sperm inside this fish, physiological saline, what you are trying to do is you want the sperm eggs to be alive, but no more time. Motility starts when you add water. But you want as many eggs from the sperm to be able to go to as many eggs as you have stripped. So you give them, you know, equal chance of survival. So that is what happens there. We are mixing. You put it and you put up on the eggs. You know, then after pouring on the eggs, then you add the water. It is at the point of adding water that motility starts. This is what a lot of our farmers have not actually gotten right. You know, once you don't get it right, you might see that you have successes maybe two out of ten times. If you are not getting to know what you did right or what you did wrong, this is usually where the problem is. It is the equal volume of water that you now pour that now makes that motility to start. And the, 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 the eggs in the sperm now goes to attack or attach to the eggs of the female. And that is when external fertilization happens and that is when breeding actually happens. I've explained all this. I've explained all this. You continue mixing. Because if you don't continue mixing, the eggs will, you know, just glue together. And once it happens like that, you know, hatching will not be very, very effective and not very good. Now, I also want to quickly submit here that, that some of us will use nets alone. It is fantastic. And some of the slides that Robert will share, you will see. Now, you see, the diameter of the African catfish head is just like about one millimeter. Very small. Now, there's some eggs we have in town. Those eggs are, 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 are nets. They are actually good. And the main size of those eggs are just a little bigger than one mm. If you spread your eggs on one layer, you know, the eggs, by the time they hatch, because the nucleus has already moved, and this is what I really, really need to explain, because the nucleus of the egg has already moved to the side, once that egg hatches, it is that same egg that drops. Usually there will be no remnants, because it is that egg that becomes the fry and goes through the mesh. Anything you see left over on the net are the unhatched eggs. The eggs that hatch will go through that mesh size. And because the eggs have this tendency to always attach themselves to anything that they see, that is why I designed you know, this system of using kakaman. Those, those are just kakaman, we call them spawning sponge. Some of us would have seen them. If you have not seen them before, it's one thing you can do. Do it by yourself, get the sponge, you just you know, put it on the net. Do the net in such a way that the eggs once they hatch, they can drop. Then you will get fantastic results. Wait for 20 to 36 hours, you know, after doing the stripping. Make sure the temperature is right. You can see I'm rushing so fast. Make sure your temperature is right. Sincerely, you will get fantastic results. You know? Now this time is always a function of temperature. A warm weather could reduce this time by up to four hours. And a cold day could increase. That is why I would want to encourage us, if you want to have an incubating system or an incubating unit, put it indoors. So where you can control your temperature effectively. That is, those are fried after 10 days. 
after 10 days. Now, the survival of this fry is a function of good food, good feed, and water. People have said, the same feed, the same fish, the same water, my fishes are dying. Something is wrong. If we both use the same thing, and your fishes are surviving, and my, my fishes are dying, then I'm doing something wrong. One thing you should always do is use the right feed. If you use the right feed as Hale Aqua, sincerely, you will get fantastic results. For as many of us here that have actually used Hale Aqua before, they can testify. It's not word of mouth. It's not trying to control anybody. It's not trying to say that this what is good is bad, and what is bad is good. We know what is good is good. Hale Aqua is good. A round of applause for Hale Aqua, please. Then, of course, water management. Manage your water very well. You'll get fantastic results. So, a lot of the fish loving. You know, a good feed, just like I said, like Hale Aqua, will be fantastic results. Now, this is when the farmer will be careful of the feed given. Hale Aqua is a tested and proven feed starter. With a feed FCR of 0 0.65 to 0 0.75 for the starter. What more does a farmer need? What more? You know? Mr. Tilna, Mr. Robert here is actually from the R&D department of Hale Aqua. What they do from morning till night is how to improve on what has been done before. There are quite a number of feed companies, they do have research and development, and they want to sell feed. I don't think it is good. It's not ideal. They are just trying to cajole us. But Hale Aqua will not do that. From the feedback that we get from you, they go back to the research room, and they try to see what else can be done to improve on what has been done before. Survival. Once the water is good, once the conditions are right, once you use Hale Aqua, you will get fantastic survival. Thank you very much.